A review of building regulations following the Grenfell Tower fire says the current system isn't fit for purpose. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. A review of fire and building regulations following the Grenfell Tower fire says the current system isn't fit for purpose and a culture change is required to ensure that safety is prioritised over cost. Dame Judith Hackett, in her interim review for the government, says the rules should be simplified and the way they're overseen should be changed. She says she's been shocked by some of the practices she's heard about. Here's our Home Affairs correspondent, Tom Simons. A report has found institutional racism in the case of an Iranian refugee who was murdered by a neighbour in Bristol in 2013. The report by the Safer Bristol Partnership says Avon and Somerset Police and Bristol City Council repeatedly sided with the abusers of Bijan Ebrahimi, who was beaten to death and his body set on fire after he was wrongly accused of being a paedophile. One man is serving a life sentence for Mr Ebrahimi's murder and two police officers were jailed for misconduct. John Kay has been talking to Bijan Ebrahimi's family and sent us this report. Police in Lebanon have arrested a man in connection with the murder of a British embassy worker in Beirut. The body of Rebecca Dykes, who was 30, was found by the side of a motorway on Saturday, the day she was due to fly back to Britain for Christmas. From Beirut, Martin Patience reports. Police in Birmingham are continuing to appeal for witnesses after a crash which left six people dead in the city centre at the weekend. Crash investigators are trying to piece together what caused the pile-up in the early hours of Sunday morning. Our correspondent Emma Thomas reports. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights says it's possible that Aung San Suu Kyi and other senior figures in Myanmar could face charges of genocide following the violence against the Rohingya Muslim minority. Zaid Rala Hussein has told the BBC that the level of planning involved suggested the repression was sanctioned at the highest level. As our South Asia correspondent Justin Rolat now reports on the BBC iPlayer. Votes are being counted in the election of a new leader of South Africa's governing party, the ANC. Activists say the bitterly fought contest remains too close to call, with delegates casting a secret ballot to choose either the deputy president, Cyril Ramaphosa, or Nkosazana Dalimi Zuma, who's a former cabinet minister and the ex-wife of President Jacob Zuma. Our South Africa correspondent, Milton and Tens of thousands of people may be putting themselves at increased risk of dying from heart attack or stroke because they're misusing anabolic steroids. The British Cardiovascular Society has issued a stark warning amid concerns that steroids are being used by more people than ever, particularly by young men who feel under pressure to have the perfect body. Dan Whitworth reports. Well, you can find out more about that on the documentary Steroid Nation. It's on the BBC iPlayer uh, under BBC Radio 1. That's on the iPlayer. Now, it was in hope rather than expectation that the beleaguered England cricket team embarked on this winter's tour to Australia, but few would have predicted they would surrender the ashes quite so easily. This morning, England were bowled out for 218, giving the hosts an innings victory and an unassailable 3-0 lead in the series. Andy Swiss reports now from Perth. Mm. Well, Thomas Schaffernacker is here. Can you lift our spirits with any weather news, Tom? That is all from the BBC News at One team. It is goodbye from me. And on BBC One, we join the BBC's news teams wherever you are. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.